Hey everyone, this is Dennis Furia from Furia Games, and I'm going to do a quick rules explainer video of Deck of Wonders and the Master of Dungeons expansion. This game is on Kickstarter right now, so please go check it out. And on that page, you will be able to find a link to play the Deck of Wonders, the Master of Dungeons demo on Tabletop Simulator for yourself. Also, if you want to see a full playthrough of the game rather than just a rules explainer, you can find a video of that on the Kickstarter page as well. So let's jump in, and I hope this explainer gets you excited to back the game. We're going to start with setup. So Deck of Wonders is a very quick setup game with a very small footprint. Um, what you're going to do first is choose the villain that you're going to face off against. For this demo, we're going to do Cullen the Spoiled Prince. Every villain has their own unique rules. You'll see those on the right side for Cullen right now. Uh, they also have their own unique deck, uh, and that is part of this deck over here. Uh, the final thing that every villain has is their own unique unlockables. So these are packs of cards that have an objective on the outside of them. When you meet that objective, you open that pack and add those cards to the game. And that's going to change things up in interesting ways, progress the story, introduce new mechanics, etc. Now, um, when you choose your villain, you take out their deck, and you're going to then add your own deck to it. This is going to be a deck of 28 cards from a much larger collection uh, that you either custom build based on the villain you're facing, or you can take a recommended pre-built deck. Um, so this deck here comprises both Cullen's deck and your deck because your cards and the villain's cards get shuffled into the same deck deck uh, and you're both drawing from it so you might draw the villains cards the villain might be uh, draw your cards and you need to be mindful of that as you're choosing what cards to put in um, finally you're going to set out any relevant rules cards uh, there are none out here right now but harbinger uh, from the master of dungeons expansion um, is our additional villain that uh, actually serves as a rules card as well. So she has her own rules. If you're playing with the expansion, you're going to set her out, and then you're going to choose four dungeon cards, which are unique to the Master of Dungeons expansion, to add to the deck that you've built. Uh, you'll start out with just four dungeon cards, uh, and then game over game, you'll have the opportunity to buy more cards um, and then choose four cards from those. Uh, so you get more and more powerful as you go along. Uh, so we've already chosen those four cards, put them in here. Harbinger is set out. We are set up. We're ready to start playing. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's a fairly small footprint uh, and very quick to set up, especially if you've already built your deck. So to start the game, you are going to draw four cards into your hand. We're starting on the player turn here. Now, um, this is only on the first turn that you draw four cards. Every turn from here on out, you're going to draw one, but you start by drawing four. You do have the option to mulligan them. It's an all or nothing mulligan, so you can throw all four away and draw four new ones if you choose. We're gonna keep what we have right now, and you'll see there are two card types. The first is a minion card, and you'll see it has uh, strength in yellow, top left, how much damage the minion can deal. Health in red on the top right, that's how much damage the minion can take. Uh, and then this green stat in the center uh, called priority. And we'll talk more about that in a second. You also see that all cards are double-sided. Like I said, both you and the villain are drawing from the same deck. So cards drawn into your hand, you're gonna use the player side. Cards drawn on the villain turn, you're gonna use the villain side, which just has the strength and the health. But Pixie Mesmerist and these other cards are in our hand. You can play out a minion without any additional cost. Um, but minions that you play are played exhausted. They are not allowed to attack the turn they're played. Um, spells have an immediate effect that happens as they're played, but then they are discarded, so there's no permanent presence. Now, some minions also have a cost. A cost is mandatory in order to play the card. So to play Treant Shepherd here, I have to discard one other card from my hand. Uh, you'll see Treant Shepherd also has a play effect, and we'll, we'll kind of play this out here. So uh, we're going to play Treant Shepherd. To do that, we have to discard a card from our hand. I'm going to choose Gust of Wind here. Um, but the play effect is that you draw an additional card. Now, unlike a cost, a play effect is not required to play the card. So if you get a play effect that you can't resolve for any reason, you just skip it. Um, but we want to draw, so let's, let's draw an additional card here. Um, and let's play out the Hungry Wolf as well. And you can choose to uh, play cards, play spells in any order you want. If we had minions ready to attack on our turn, we could attack with them. 
uh, at any time we want. Um, you can play as many or as few cards as you like, and then at the end of your turn, you're going to ready any minions that are exhausted. Uh, so now the next turn, if they survive, they will be able to attack. So that concludes the player turn, and now we're going to start the villain turn. Uh, Cullen, or any villain you're facing, gets to draw and immediately play the cards they draw. So there is no hand of cards for the villain. On the opening turn for the villain, uh, so just this turn, they're going to draw and play three cards. From then on out, just like for us, it's only going to be one card. But uh, let's start here, and Cullen draws a forest troll plays that immediately. Uh, you'll notice I've turned it to the villain side and I've played it ready to attack. The forest troll also on the villain side has some play text, destroy one other villain minion. Uh, so that'd be actually be great for us if there were any other villain minions out. Since Cullen has drawn the forest troll first, he gets it effectively for free. We're skipping that play text. Uh, the second draw for Cullen this turn is pixie cavalry right here. Uh, no special text on Pixie Cavalry, so she just comes out ready to attack. And then the third draw is Gnomish Servant, uh, which says play draw one. Now it's important to know that uh, a draw for the villain consists not just of that card drawn, but any additional effects on that card. So as part of Cullen's third draw, he gets a fourth card. Uh, and that is drawing and playing cards for the villain. We're now going to go into the battle lines phase, where we get to rearrange things to try to get a better result. Um, we also need to be mindful of uh, any rules cards we have out or rules on villains that we are playing against. Uh, in this instance, as we enter the battle lines phase, Harbinger uh, has a rule hidden entrance that's actually going to benefit us. So during the first battle lines phase, which we're in right now, you may exhaust one villain minion. I'm going to use that uh, as we speak. I'm going to exhaust the Gnomish Servant, but I acknowledge a little 1-1 one, one wimp here is, is not the best strategic choice. Uh, it's just the choice that preserves the demo I want to do that showcases all the rules. So uh, anyone screaming at their monitor that that was the wrong choice, you're right. Um, but here we go. All right. So we've used Harbinger's rule, and now we are going to draw battle lines. Let's zoom in here as we talk about this. So when we draw battle lines, we get to put these cards in any order we want, both on the villain side and on our side. The one stipulation is that on our side, our minions have to stay in priority order. That means that a higher priority, like this four on the Pixie Mesmerist, needs to go further left than minions with three priority and on down the line. Where there is a tie, like Hungry Wolf and Treant Shepherd here, you get to decide the order they go in. Uh, I'm not going to change anything this first time through, so we'll play it out and then we'll come back to the battle lines phase. Um, but you can also put the villain minions in any order you like. Uh, they do not have priority, so there is no restriction on the order they go in. But the rule is that they will always attack one at a time from left to right, targeting the highest priority player minion until it's dead. Uh, so let's play that out. Let's not change anything and go from the battle lines phase into resolving the villain's attacks. Uh, to see how that would go. Forest Troll will attack first because it is furthest left. It targets Pixie Mesmerist because she is highest priority. Five damage versus two health is more than enough, so it's going to attack. Now, let's say for, for some reason the Forest Troll couldn't kill the Pixie Mesmerist on its own. Let's say this was a one instead of a five. In that case, um, the furthest left villain minion teams up with the next one down the line, and you count both their attacks. So these two together can kill Pixie Mesmerist, so then they would both attack Pixie Mesmerist, um, and on down the line until every villain minion has attacked. Uh, as is, though, five attack versus two health, the Forest Troll is going to attack and kill the Pixie Mesmerist. The Pixie Mesmerist does technically deal one damage back to the Forest Troll, but that's not enough to take out the Forest Troll's three health. So just the Pixie Mesmerist is discarded. Next up in the villain order is Pixie Cavalry. Two damage against the new highest priority player minion, which is Hungry Wolf. Uh, one health, so that is enough to kill it in one hit. Hungry Wolf deals three damage back to Pixie Cavalry, which is enough to take out Pixie Cavalry, and so these two are going to trade. Um, wherever there are multiple cards put into the discard at once, you get to choose the order they go in. So I could have, if I wanted, put the Hungry Wolf on top. Now, uh, the next villain minion is Poison Toad. 
Um, the highest priority player minion, and the only one, is Treant Shepherd. So one damage versus three health. Normally, that wouldn't be enough to kill it. So we're going to ignore the card text for a second. One damage versus three health, not enough to kill it. So instead of attacking the player minion, because it's not going to kill it, Poison Toad is going to attack the player instead, and we would lose health. Uh, and that's how that's how the villain kind of behaves, hopefully emulating a, an intelligent opponent, which is take out high priority minions. When you can't take out a high priority minion, you uh, attack face. Um, but as I mentioned, it's not that simple. Uh, Poison Toad has poison destroy any minion this minion deals damage to. Uh, it's effectively death touch from magic, so it's going to kill the Treant Shepherd, even though it only has one damage. Um, so it does attack and kill the Treant Shepherd. The Treant Shepherd deals three damage back and these cards trade with each other as well. Not a great result for us. Uh, we had our board wiped. Uh, Cullen still has his biggest, scariest minion on board. So what we're gonna do is rewind back to that battle lines phase and see if we can get a better result. Bear with me as I bring these cards out. All right, we are back at the battle lines phase. Remember, we can put our minions in priority order, uh, and wherever there's a tie, we get to choose what that means. We can put the villain minions in any order. So we could, for example, uh, push the poison toad up to the top of the order um, and pull the forest troll back in the order. Uh, we could as well, since these two are tied for priority, uh, we could push the treant shepherd forward in the order like this. Uh, so there, that was the battle lines phase where we actually changed things. Uh, let's now play it out. Poison Toad now attacks first because it's furthest left, and it targets the Pixie Mesmerist. Two health, but it's poison damage, so it attacks. Uh, Pixie Mesmerist one damage back actually does take out the Poison Toad, so these are both discarded. Next up is Pixie Cavalry. With two damage, that's not enough to kill the Treant Shepherd, so she has to team up with the Forest Troll. Two plus five, now they have enough together, but both of them have to attack the Treant Shepherd, and the Treant does three damage back to both Pixie Cavalry and three damage back to the Forest Troll. Um, and so we've engineered a nice little two-for-one trade. And these are all going to be discarded, but again, uh, wherever you're discarding multiple cards at once, you get to choose what goes on top. I'm going to put this Forest Troll on top because I know I have a card that can fish it out of the discard. Um, but anyway, that would now be the end of the villain's turn. And we've done much better for ourselves. Uh, ending the villain's turn, you ready their minions. Play would pass over to us and we would draw a card. But that's the general flow of the game. Uh, let's talk now about the Master of Dungeons. So we got some special rules from Harbinger that helped us out. Um, also, when we draw for our next turn, one card... Uh, we draw a dungeon card. Hey, who knew that was going to happen? <laughs> so uh, dungeon cards are new with the Master of Dungeons. And rather than having a villain side and a player side, they have two choices. We can only resolve one side of this card, but we have to choose one immediately whenever we draw it. Uh, we'll then resolve it and draw a card to replace it. So our choice here with Long Rest is uh, the top side. You may not play cards during the next player car, uh, player turn, which we're starting now, so we wouldn't be able to play cards this turn, but we would restore five health to the player and draw two cards instead of one. So as I mentioned, we'll draw to uh, replace this card once we resolve it, uh, but with long rest, we're going to draw two cards to replace it. That's great. We could pass out for the night, or we could choose to exhaust all player minions and gain a gold. Gold is a new currency uh, unique to the Master of Dungeons, Harbinger, instead of having objectives on her unlock packs, I don't know why she's upside down, she's tricky like that, <laughs> but instead of having objectives on her unlock packs, she has gold prices, and you need to earn enough gold in a single game to buy a card out of that level of pack, so we want to be earning gold. Uh, we also whoop, we also are, are at full health right now, um, and we're okay on cards, uh, and while I don't want to have to exhaust the Hungry Wolf, I think starting to build gold would be the right choice. So we're going to choose to play this side of Long Rest. We place it at the bottom and start building our dungeon down. Uh, and we resolve the effect. So exhaust our minion, 
and uh, draw two card, or excuse me, draw one card to replace it. Had we taken the other side, we would be able to draw two cards. Uh, so here we go. You know, we got a, a hand of spells now. We can choose to use those or not. Pass play back over to the villain. They draw one card, uh, and play continues from there, exactly like that. Uh, hopefully that gives you a good idea of the in-game play for Deck of Wonders and for the Master of Dungeons. Uh, the one last thing to talk about is between games. So uh, at the end of a game, if you've won, you are able to upgrade a card. So you'll see both these spells have an upgrade icon on them in the middle right there. Um, so you choose a card that has an upgrade icon and you can upgrade it in one of many different ways. You could make it draw more for you. You could make it cost less if it has a cost. You could debuff the villain side of the card uh, and that allows you to customize the deck of wonders to your preferences. Um, you also, between games, can spend the gold that you earned in the previous game to unlock new, more powerful dungeon cards. Uh, and then finally, the unlock packs for the regular villains have objectives where if you met that objective, you would open the pack. That's going to introduce new mechanics, new challenges, and advance the story of the game. Uh, and that is the flow and rules overview for Deck of Wonders. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you back us on Kickstarter. And if you'd like to see a full game, you can just watch the next video. See you around.